Okay, so we're recording, and um, I thought we, we would, rather than discussing it personally about the Pluto return is something you wanted to look at, I thought we would, could get on here and just uh, record our conversations about it as uh, avid enthusiasts in astrology, and um, I haven't done anything on my channel for a year, so all those people that have been waiting for it, welcome back. I'm sorry about that. There's been uh -huh. lots of things during COVID that I have had to uh, face and face down and uh, some decidedly unpleasant, but we're back now. And uh, one of my ex-students uh, and uh, fellow uh, astrologers, Lorraine, is here with us. And um, uh, really, it's, uh, it's all very amateur. I know I haven't got the flashy lights and the, the titles and everything else, but <laughs> let's move past that. and. Uh, uh, maybe engage on um, on this Pluto or any other subjects you wanted uh, to, to talk about. Yes, hello Richard, thank you. I'm very grateful for this opportunity. Um, I'm quite intrigued with Pluto. I heard that there will be a Pluto return for America next year mm. and um, so I'd love you to explain a bit more about that and how there is a chart, how there is a birth chart for America, for example, um, and um, oh, and how it might differ for a country. Um, oh, I'm getting confused. <laughs> Sorry, right. I might have to right. so that. There are a number of different questions we can the do. The thing is, I think I've got lots of questions. And I'm not sure whether to do them one at a time. Well, right. let's, start, let's start off with the, um, uh, you know, you're a Pisces and I'm a Virgo. Yeah. So this is, a, a, well, I'm not, not a Virgo. I say I've got a Virgo ascendant with Mars in Virgo and you, you've got a Pisces. Yeah. I'm actually sounding yeah. cancer. So we're sympathetic emotionally. Um, okay. I've but, got moon in Virgo. What's that? I've got moon in Virgo. Okay, well, you'll have to call upon that. <laughs> <laughs> Because we could just do one thing at a time, even though okay. the, the, the subject is quite huge, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, if I can, I mean, um, I wanted to know about Pluto in somebody's natal chart, as opposed to Pluto transiting. And of course, a Pluto return is something exceptional, and it can't really happen to a person. So I am intrigued what might happen. I mean, we can see that things are already happening in America, pretty transformational and destructive, probably. Um, uh, and I was also particularly interested in what the cycle of Pluto for America might have shown, perhaps at the, you know, at the quarter and the midway yes. point and the three quarters. So. There you are. Those sort of questions have been in my mind. <laughs> Ooh, quite a lot to cover. Um, yes. <laughs> quite a lot to cover. Uh, so let's do this in in, in bits. Um, uh, because there's Pluto in a natal chart. You yes. also asked a question about um, mundane charts, how, how we yes. get them, what, what they mean on, on that. And then, of course, also the individual uh, transit of Pluto and um, never, and then the whole concept of returns, planets yeah. returns. Yeah. Yes. So we might do this in, in small bits, I suppose. But let's cover, let's cover the, uh, the mundane astrology. Um, at best, charts of countries or mm. nations are, are speculative. At right. best. Unless yeah. you have a specific time in which a specific uh, signature is signed and then it becomes a country. And even then, after various wars or takeovers, then they have another mm -hmm. sign. And so yeah. on. So the whole concept of mundane astrology is a bit is a bit speculative. Um, for example, the chart of the uh, England, the 1066 chart, the um, uh, William the Conqueror. And he, he was it's actually a chart of his coronation. In right. Winchester Abbey, in and so it's it's set for twelve noon. You see, a lot of a lot of um, nations are set for twelve noon. So the sun is always around about the tenth house cusp, or, or or around about you know just just over in the mm. night. And what they do is 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 they set up a chart for the organism of right. a country. 
And so in this way, if you if you see charts as inceptions, inceptions are beginnings. Yeah. You get that in orrery. It's a chart of an inception. And then you explore that to see if it has any validity. The chart, the birth, birth horoscope isn't just a chart of a moment. It, that moment is, is, is comes into being and we it, it's the beginning of something, you see. Okay. So, yeah. um, uh, and so we look at that moment and see if it has any validity in a person's life. And every every birth chart, for example, you and I accept that it has validity. But mm. until the symbols become actual in a person's life and we can see them, they don't have any what is called signification value. A significator is a, pro is a proposition and it says this symbol is significant in somebody's life. Then you look for it or you find it or you talk about it and then bang, it appears. Mm -hmm. I mean, why don't you t t tell um, t tell me that that story about what you saw about your son? Uh, yes, I have just come back from visiting my son um, in Devon, and I was very amused because he's his new his latest sort of um, toy <laughs> was a nut. He's taken up archery, and so I I was and he said it's so fulfilling. He said. It's the, it's the most satisfying thing he's he's done. But he's also got one of those, it, a sort of a um, line that he's put stretched between two trees to walk along to balance. And so he was also doing that while I was there. And he is Libra, which is wonderful for balance. Uh, and his son is conjunct Mars. So I thought with these arrows, these sharp pointy things, um, he was yes. absolutely living his chart. <laughs> Exactly. So psychologically, that Sun conjunction Mars is a person that is determined to get his own way, to have oh. his own will, to, yeah. um, you know, to push through in those in the life force, if you like, to be self-assertive. Uh, it done in a Libran way. It's all very nice. Yes. It's very polite and very cordial, probably, you know, well-mannered, graceful, all of very that. Well uh, but, <laughs> you see, so, but, but that's a delineation at the psychological level. Yes. Then we take another level of interpretation and you can see that that Mars becomes archery. And yes. archery is about sight. And sight okay. is often about focus. And the lens of the eye, which yes. focuses, is Mars. Yes. Ah. In traditional astrology, the right eye of a man is ruled by the sun because it represents ah. light and seeing. And so, but Mars is focus, you see? It's pointedness. It represents. He uses that word a lot, focus. He tells his little son, "Now focus. Come on, focus." <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, so see, and being, you know, that son in Libra, we can see the tightrope, and we yes. can see the element of balance. So that you were gonna, you were gonna take a picture of both of them in the yeah, same. Yeah, I, I will. <laughs> that's a classic example of realized signification. Yes. Yes. We have the we have the the idea of of the symbol becoming actual, and then you see it, and then it clicks in the astrologer's mind, and it's yeah. not just symbolism actually; it's actual, isn't it? Actual action, yes, yes. Libra is balanced, and and uh, Mars is one pointedness. Mm. <laughs> Which, by the way, in uh, in the specialist. Uh, uh, I can't remember what it's called, that, that particular type of archery where they do that, that is also to do with the fine balance of the Tao, that they, um, they, they breathe into it and then they, let, you know, they pull it down yeah. like that. And I can't remember, it's divine archery and they let go at the right moment. Ah, oh, okay. And that's, and, and so, yes, it's focused, but it's not, it's not, have I got no, that? Sure. Right. It's, it's a kind of being in sync. Yeah, well, he looked great doing it. I just did feel he was absolutely, you know, it looked very beautiful. You know, his posture and he was so upright and yeah, it looked well, he good. May be, he may be doing that particular type of archery. And actually, it's interesting that that links to what I was saying about inceptions, because mm -hmm. the moment of release of the arrow is called the Kairos moment. Ah, and Kairos is, um, it means many things in Greek, in, yes. in Greek yes. but it, it means the right time to do something. Okay. Is it to do with Chiron or not? 
No, not Kairos. That's something else. Kairos. That's something else. Okay, Kairos. Okay. Yeah, yeah there's di two different forms of time. One is standard okay. rigid time, and the other oh, is like time. Um, okay. Right yeah. time. Okay. Okay. And those type of um, those type of uh, archery people. That moment. Um, yeah, they, they they let go at the right time, and that oh, time is told to them. Yes. 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 And yeah. in uh, in the arts of uh, communication and talking and oratory, it used to be one of the four principles of um, oratory. Oh. And uh, you know that you could time something so that it built up to a climax, and then it would change the people listening to it. Oh, yeah, very nice. Yeah. Anyway, look, yeah. I, well, we've wandered off, but that's we've quite wandered an right off. <laughs> But, but but we're allowed to. We can do what we like. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be published. But we can yes. get this down. Absolutely, absolutely. And I tend to wander a bit, but the uh, well, it's good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> the point that I was making is that signification in astrology, yes, is that moment when the signifier becomes realised in a person's life, and mm -hmm. you can retake that symbolism time and again. So going back to mundane charts. Yes. Um, the chart of America, for example, uh, is yes. well. Um, th there's there's several charts. Um, one is earlier in the morning. One is later in the day, and people there. It's a lot of disputes. Uh, for example, uh -huh. the actual the actual declaration was uh, noted on July the second. Yes. Um, but it wasn't confirmed until July the fourth. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. John Adams and and and, and so on and Jefferson. Um, I'm not. I don't want to go into too much into the technicalities of the history. Yeah, sure. But but one has a Gemini ascendant, and one has a Sagittarius ascendant, which is the opposite. Oh, oh, yes. And a case can be made for for both. I, I use the Sibley chart, which is a rectification um for later in the evening because that was given in certain diaries of people uh, present that that it was signed later the declaration yeah. of independence and of course so uh, although we call this the chart of the nation it's mundane chart it's actually a chart for for the declaration of independence right yeah so mm -hmm. it, the, the, these the origins of the actual charts are quite interesting ours is a coronation for the king of england being mm -hmm. a, a French, um, you know, be, being French, the coronation of yes. William the Conqueror. Yes. yes. Uh, in England uh, never settled into a French king. And uh, around about after about 130, 40 years, maybe 50 years, they, they he, he got ousted because he couldn't rule people that didn't want him there. No, of course. So, and, so England must have had a Pluto return. Uh, oh, I always had several Pluto returns. I haven't, oh, yes. I haven't studied yeah. them for this, um, no. for this no. book, but that's that's quite several interesting. Yes. So you you explore the chart, mm. you prove the chart, and in one of my um, YouTube uh, YouTube videos, I do about a half an hour on. Um, it was a chart done in two thousand and nineteen. It was called England is leaking. I saw that one. I saw that. Yes. Yes. And it, it, it was about was it the Houses of Parliament with the um I don't know the pipes or something were leaking. Is that the one? The roof leaked, yes. The roof, that's it, yes. And uh -huh. we we're in the midst of this Brexit, you see. Yes, yes. And we yes. kept on hearing these these fears of waves of people. We're going yes. to be inundated, which is usually linked yeah. with water. And so I heard this, and but I thought it was an omen. Oh, yeah. And I said that at the very beginning of the video. Mm, mm. And I also said on that video, uh, around about 20 minutes in, that we were going to suffer a disease in the country. Oh, oh wow. Yes, yes, yes. If you remember, yeah. because what I did is I proved the chart. I looked back at the last Neptune opposition yeah. to Saturn. And that's what I saw. Neptune leaks, God of Water, mm, and the 12th yes, house was, yes. was opposed to Saturn in the 6th. Yeah. Which represents yeah. the health of the nation, obviously, mm -hmm. and being in Virgo. Yeah. So last time there was, uh, I looked at that. There was an outbreak of cholera in London really? and in the country. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, One hundred sixty-five years previously, and um, I assumed that this would repeat in some way, and I said it, and bang, 
look what happened. Well, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Do, do, do you see? So this is called proving a chart. Yes, absolutely. So when we come to mundane charts, you have to look at it to see if it has any validity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the Sibley chart, the 1066 chart with the 12 degree a Sagittarius ascendant on the cusp of the United States is, okay. does fit. But the other one fits as well. Right, right. Mm. Because the Gemini ascendant often represents a divided country or two parts. Mm. Mm. And America has two parts, the North and the South. Those yes. were for slavery and those were against slavery. They'd already had their, 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 um, their civil war, you see, previous to that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, th there's these two factions. But Sagittarius can represent that as well, of course, because it's sure. a, a double-bodied sign. Yes, yeah. Mm. I mean, do you see, I mean, in your knowledge of astrology, would you see Sagittarian ascendant as quite American? I think so. Sagittarius to me feels like freedom and look very much a vision for the future yeah. and forward looking and and sort of that enterprising, you know, the um, the people going up to the frontiers and yeah. So I think Sagittarius feels right. It's perfect, isn't it? Yes, um, yeah. All of those are actually keywords to Sagittarius. Yes. Freedom opportunity and even the horses you know cowboys on their horses it's such an image we have of america exactly yes. and uh, and uh, jupiter if we're going to have a look at um, not in this video but in the next one well um yes. we're going to have a look at the america's chart and we'll see jupiter is in cancer oh okay, okay. and so it's in its exaltation sign which oh. means there's, a, there's a sense of abundance yes yes and um, according to some people, the, the name America means of the home. Oh, OK. Uh, there, there are there's various things about the, how, how countries are named, rather like planets. They seem yes. to just come out and they're the right, they're, they're named correctly. Um, yes, yeah. uh, but, but the Sagittarian Ascendant represents the horses, the frontiers, yes. the opportunity, mm -hmm. the yes. enterprise and being yes. in conjunction with the sun. Yes. the conjunction of the sun there's a sense of a national identity which is full of hope full yes. of freedom yes, of the, yes. you know their, their right to protect the country and when yes. i first landed in america in 1986 i went to see noel till actually oh, my, yeah. Yeah. a famous uh, american astrologer he's died now yeah. a couple of years uh, ago but uh somebody I learned a great deal of astrology from, and he was uh, an acquaintance friend because uh, we lived in different countries. Uh, and um, he has some conjunction Jupiter and Capricorn. Ooh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he was a giant, six foot 11, yeah. you know. Really? Yeah, wow. six foot 11, yeah. grand opera singer, wonderful man. Uh, wow. Some people didn't like his presentations, but I didn't mind. I mean, what else are you going to do with the sun Jupiter? <laughs> Be big and be great and do the of best course. you can and be, be a global <laughs> citizen yeah mm. and so sun america has that as as its bright light and um as i say i went there in 86 and i was received very warmly within an hour would you believe this within an hour of sitting down for coffee i was asked literally this is so classic i was asked back to meet a family uh for beef stew oh <laughs> That's so he, because we, we we were linked with our art i was a musician at yeah. the time he was yeah. a metal worker and he taught me back to meet his family and i oh I, very I, I, welcoming I and with his daughter you know because she was learning piano i mean that oh. was the real heart absolutely heart. big hearted big hearted yeah very yeah. very big and yeah, yeah. You know, and when we talk about the country, we're talking about a a kind of character. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. And now in mundane charts, the 10th house is, represents the um, the government in power. Yeah. Sometimes the sun represents the, the president, of course, the person. But yeah. um, but we must never forget that the governments don't always represent their people. No, absolutely. <laughs> 
you yeah. know, because there was, you, you know what I mean? Oh, you remember in the Vietnam War that, that half or more of America did not want it. And then, and then there was yeah. the stalwart government classes that mm -hmm. realized it's all to do with power and prestige in the world and both had their arguments. Sure. Mm. You, know, you know, and we can see that Sagittarian ascendant, mm. bubble bodied sign, you know, and it's always yeah. been in favor of argument and challenge and freedom. Yeah. And yes. Because we knew that, that, that America took, uh, uh, um, took great um, affinity with France mm. and their uh, uh, revolution. Of course, of and, course. And, and yeah. that, therefore, the Statue of Liberty. And yes, I saw yes. the Statue of Liberty in 86, too. And I, I don't know, it had a strange effect on me. Really, it was wonderful to see burning wow. flame at the top. Yes, yeah. So Sagittarian in its thing. Yeah, so. absolutely, fire. Mm. And so the moon very... is the people. Sorry? Is that that's the, the, the moon represents the people in the mundane chart? Yes. Yes. And that um, is in Aquarius. Oh, again, very freedom loving. Yes, it's it's hardest towards humanity, humanitarianism. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's very interesting, although it's a quite a religious country, it's America, the heart of the uh, Constitution and the Declaration of Independence is a kind of secular, in God we trust, of course, so it's not secular, but it's, kind of, it's a kind of religious, it's not a theocracy. But it has mm -hmm. a, a kind of declaration of we the people. Yes, yeah. And this yeah. is very, very, very uh, uh, moon in Aquarius. It can go a bit wrong because Aquarius can get its fixed ideas about things. Yes, yes. And it thinks this is the best way. Freedom is, you know, or whatever. And it can, it, it can then say this is how things should be. Mm. Aquarians can get a bit... Um, uh, uh, Liz Green called them called the, the shadow side of Aquarius the ideological hobby horse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I also heard someone say Aquarians love humanity, but they don't like people very much. <laughs> I don't know. The pure sign. If yeah. we're looking at the pure energy of the sign, remember the moon is in it in, in America's chart. No, it's the heart of uh, i mean america is made uh, was made by uh, the america we know today was made by immigrants yes from everywhere it called forth them the, the jewish community the german yeah. italians yeah. at the turn of the century its history is it, it, it's an absolutely incredible history mm -hmm. yes yeah i mean yeah. how how did they go how did they build these skyscrapers and absolutely. everything else and, and, and they yes. went through the terrible, um, you know, uh, decline of Wall, Wall Street, you know, the, mm. the Great Crash, 29. Yeah. Um, which I think was a, I think the, the day Pluto went retrograde on that day. I, I'm not sure. Anyway, really? well, okay. um, so in its heart, a, a chart describes the, an entity or an organism coming into being. Mm. And from it, you can almost see the personality of a nation yes, described yes. in a chart. And these are very, very general tendencies. Mm. Now, Aquarius has a tendency to view the whole first and the individual second. Yes. Cancer yes. tends to see the individual first and the mm. whole second so mm. it's quite a good connection and i i say that because i'm signing cancer and the moon in mm. aquarius so ah. so that you know that there's a, there's an affinity i let yes. i have yeah. with yeah. with the generalities of the american psyche as liz yeah. green yes yes so yeah. we're working now on the on the basic elements planets in signs oh. we'll look at oh. the Pluto. Uh, another time. Um, okay. Aquarius, okay. yes, the problem with Aquarius, um, they're looking at large, broad scale concepts, they're uh, looking down how people fit together. Mm. Um, Can be a bit cool, I guess, a bit cool and aloof, maybe. What have you found? Cool and Well, aloof. I have got, yeah, I've, I, my ex husband was Aquarius and We've stayed friends. It's it's also a sign of friendship, isn't it? And um, but I've got uh, Venus and Mars in Aquarius, actually. So um, I do. Uh, 
I feel it's about fairness and wanting, yeah, wanting fairness. Um, there is a coolness. I don't know, detachment, maybe. <laughs> I, it's confusing for me because I've got Pisces and Virgo, but uh, Aquarius, I, I would say, oh, they, they um, it's all up in the head, isn't it, very much? Just thinking of my ex. Yeah. It, can be, it can be, but so it's um, logical, logical. Mm. But it's a different kind of love. Yes. yes. And uh, I think I think we've confused in the West generally the idea that love is all Cancerian and emotional, yeah, warm, <laughs> compassion, yeah. And, yeah. And, so, and that is a form of love. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, but but love when you fall in love, it's highly selfish. Yes, it's yeah, you and yeah. involvement with another, and there's great uh, chemicals are released and fantasies are released. Oh, mm. uh, give me some, open the window, bring it in. It's a wonderful <laughs> experience, but, it, but, but that's a form of personalized love in which you see the image of the beloved in another. But yes, the air signs have a kind of universal love. Yes, yeah, yeah. And in fact, they're given a bad name, Aquarius. It's that their love is seen as in, it can be seen through a universal attachment mm, to mm. humanity, yes. that we all belong in the same boat, yes. that the world functions together. So I think it's been an in inspiration behind the green movement, behind the environmental yes. That we all live in the same system. But in order to have that kind of love, mm. it must be in a way, not intellectual, but of reason, higher reason. Yeah. Yeah. Because Absolutely. it's only reason that can accept the whole and all the differences in the whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aquarius yeah. look for the similarities, and that's why the similarities of being, and that's yeah. why it's called the sign of universal friendship, because... Yeah. Friendship is a form of love. It's Philadelphia. Yeah. We're back to, you know, yeah, to the state. <laughs> brother and love, aren't we? Philadelphia. I'd forgotten that. Yeah. You know, the, the, yeah. Delphia being the, the, the temple and Phila yeah. means uh, friendship. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So it's the temple yeah. of friendship. And isn't that yeah. wonderful for Moon in Aquarius? It is. It is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I think it's, it's a good discussion because I think. Air signs are given a bad name, or oh, they don't love, or they're too cool. They can be, but what they're looking for is an affinity of mind, yeah, yeah, yeah an affinity yeah. of principles. Absolutely. And yeah. once that happens, your Venus, if you've got Venus in Aquarius, that yeah. will then open the road to a personal relationship. Absolutely. Yes. But if yeah. you don't have an affinity of ideas, mm. you don't have an affinity of humanitarianism or some form of group ethos in which brings humanity together, then yeah. another per you, it won't appeal to you. Yeah, yeah. Mm, Do you have Venus in Aquarius? Absolutely, yeah, Venus in Aquarius I have, yes, absolutely. No, that's right, yeah. That uh, having someone of like mind, yeah. yeah. Yes, like mind, like ideas, communication, yeah. shared values, yeah. higher moral principles, or, yeah. uh, you know, universally shared qualities, so that yeah. you can get past the difference, yes, and then mm -hmm. see what you both share in terms of the whole of humanity. It's an mm -hmm. it's it's a kind of vision of heaven. Yes. You yeah. know, a, 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 by that, uh, you know, Uranus is the sky god. He sees he yeah. sees all it's universal space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so Aquarius has that, as I say, it has in its higher values. It's not just a love of your of your group, which is, uh, mm. or, or love of your friends, which is often there, especially when Venus or, or Moon is in them, because uh, they can personalise it a bit more. But Aquarius seeks a kind of social justice, mm. uh, e equality, fraternity, yeah. e egality. Isn't that yeah. the, the three words that come from the Statue of Liberty? Absolutely. Of course, of course, yeah. Liberty, yeah. equality, and fraternity. Those are the yeah. three guideposts, so three as of the of the greater values of Aquarius. Yeah. Where it goes wrong is that sometimes it, it because it's a fixed sign, it gets this idea that its philosophy is is the one. Who who can argue against liberty, fraternity? Exactly. Freedom, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so let's yeah. impose it on people. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right? Very good. And, and yeah. some natures, I suppose this is at the moment a, a, a little bit in the news, isn't it, with the uh, fall of Kabul and, and so on. And some nations have their own groundedness mm. in their own values. Mm. Uh, we may see them as sometimes as rather medieval or old or whatever, but these things run deep in different nations and it's not right to then suddenly see something and say, well, because we're like this, you should be like this, no matter what you see. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and I think people are seeing that America's, uh, at least the American government has had to withdraw. It's very, very controversial. Yes. But I believe it is part of the Pluto um, uh, uh, return, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Which, we can, which we can cover in, as I say, more detail. Yes, I'd love to. I would love to do that. Yes. In the, yeah. In the next video or something. Yes. Yeah. No, that would be good. And also to look at what happened at the, the quarter point and the half point in American history and that and the three quarter point. But would you like to do some work on that yourself? Because I, I don't want to, you know, I'd rather cover the astrology and then we could come together on that. Sure, sure. Well, that is, um, oh, I see. OK, but just out of interest to see where, which great changes perhaps happen. But I will look at the dates. Yeah, yeah. I see, sure. Yeah, uh, because you, you're absolutely right, of course, to to understand the, the how, what actually happened. Yes. Um. Uh, with the Pluto is it, it, classic astrology. You look to what's happened oh. in the past and that would prove the chart. P yeah, exa right, exactly. F. Yes. Um, you know, I, I mean, when I was proving England's chart, you know, in that in that video, I saw that Neptune was square Uranus in the ninth house. Right, what happened right. then? You know, when, when transiting Neptune square Uranus in the ninth, well, that was the uh, takeaway of England from the Church of Rome. Oh, wow. That okay. was the striking out. Uh, the, uh, there was an actual, uh, it took many, many years, obviously, oh, with the King oh. Henry VIII and all that. But um, it, 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 there was a declaration which finally said, we are a church in our own right. We don't want your power. We don't want your, yes. And so, mm. and that's interesting that Uranus in the ninth. Yes. That at yeah. the time, so we the were the off, rebel. Yeah, 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 cutting off. Interesting, yeah. Um, so, um, so that chart was well proved before I then based certain predictions or certain um, speculations, let's call it, prognostications on, on its symbols. Once you've got the chart is valid, though. Yes. Yeah. Once you see these generalized statements of planets in signs yeah. and, and, and then we can look at the transits. I mean, Pluto went across, you know, the United States ascendant in 2000 you know, uh, in, in uh, 9-11. Oh, yes, so it did. I remember hearing that, yes. Extraordinary. Well, so that's definitely proved it. <laughs> well, it's, it's like, yes, but not everybody, people listening, they they got, they can get very superstitious astrologers. Well, <laughs> when Pluto crosses my ascendant, you know, uh, is my whole life going to fall? Oh, gosh, that's um, true. Yes. No, I mean, I, I, I'm sitting here, right? Yeah. With Pluto yeah. conjunction my Saturn. Wow, I had that a while ago, yeah. Well, I'd yeah. like to talk about that with you because you <laughs> tell me all about it. Uh, uh, but uh, my Saturn is sitting on America's um, uh, uh, Pluto position, which is 2732 uh -huh. Capricorn. My, uh -huh. my Saturn position is 2750 Capricorn. Okay, okay, yeah. So I feel quite quite okay about talking about it. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Well, same here. I had not that long ago... Um, uh where is it? yeah my Saturn is also in Capricorn I think about halfway 16 or something but yes yeah, so I did but I did have a lot of disruptions you know when Pluto was going through the third house oh my goodness you know so I got through it <laughs> but the whole um it felt like the tower card the tarot card the yeah. tower yes uh, I know, it, I know it well um things happen <laughs> you can't ignore them yeah. Well, maybe we can talk about that in our next uh, discussion as a build-up. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. That's right. That would be a good yeah. to look at it personally, then to see. Yeah. Okay, so what's going to happen? To, to well, America? that was part of your questions about what it is, it, you know, Pluto transits personally. 
Absolutely, absolutely, yes, yeah. Okay, no, that would be a good So we'll, we'll stop this discussion for now and then uh, sure. do another one on the remaining aspects of your questions. Lovely. All right, been nice. <laughs> okay, okay. Mm.